Good afternoon, everybody, or I would say good evening now. Um, this is Nella again, and I have one amazing inquiry from our subscriber, and it's all about apron lighting. So, apron lighting. So, what is an apron lighting? And who asked? Um, this is um, Mr. Ashish Shah. And he asked me, will you make one demo or tutorial for airport, airport apron front lighting with LED light fixtures? So, okay, Ashish, this is how you will do it. Okay, it depends on the requirements. So, you, it, um, apron lighting is just similar to area lighting. And if you want to know more, I check some links where you can uh, just look for it. I will give you the link. I will put the link here in the YouTube video so you can just download it. This one is from um, yeah, Light and Engineering. It's a study about apron lighting, but I think it's a little obsolete now. Anyways, you can just read it one. And also this one, you can check this one, but yeah, it's so many pages. But this is an example of replacing the sodium lamp with LED floodlights in the apron area so by the way what is an apron lighting so an apron lighting is a lighting design where you need to light up the airplanes on the parking area or the apron area <laughs> okay so this is the example in this image images i will show you this is what the apron look like okay so this is where the airplanes parked and you can see usually the lights used in this area is a high mast with the floodlights, a powerful flood, floodlight. The good thing about apron lighting is you don't need to have um, lux, a high value lux level requirements uh, similar to unlike with the sports lighting. In apron lighting, you will only need uh, 30 to 40 lux or 50 lux, whatever the client requires. And, and it's easy to achieve. The only difficulties in apron lighting is the what we call glare because most of the pilots are complaining with the glare from the floodlights. So we need to reduce the glare creation on the apron area. So on uh, how to do that is very easy. Okay, I will show you some. Some apron area is floodlights are located on the building itself. Some are in the pole or mast. So it depends. And but usually the height of the apron floodlights is um, usually 20 and above. Sometimes they're 16 or it depends on the height of the building. And that is where the glare difficulties is hard to achieve because the more the lower the location or the mounting of the floodlights, the harder it is to get a lesser glare. So the higher the mass, the better uh, glare value you can achieve because the floodlights are pointing downward not on the vertical okay so i will show you some of my design so this is i think an apron in oman oops and i ran a calculation and this is how i did it so the, the uh, floodlight is here on the area the actual situation is there's a, a building on this side it's just i showed the only the fence and the mast and this is how you will do it so you will just place the points and also the glare calculation points on every spacing so i will show you how you will do it and okay i, I think i already opened it it's here so this is the example this is not mine this is one of my friend's project <laughs> i just took it from this is the only available apron light available in my desktop right now so this is how he did it and um, I think the client requires to have a 40 lux on vertical and horizontal and the glare value must not be more than <clears throat> uh, 40 or 35 I think so let's see you can see here uh, let's just check this one first so these are the floodlights you can see here these are the floodlights that he used uh, okay so he aligned it like that you can see here if you want to see it like that so these are the floodlights and these are the calculation surface that he used and if you go to his so this is the horizontal luminance these are the luminaires and the, the objects are the poles 
calculation points you can see that he put a lot of let's go to the plan view it put a lot of uh, observer and the observer he used is um, the height is one meter only but I told him that the airplane is high and the pilots is sitting on the chair maybe two meters is much better rather than one meter but because two meters creates a lot of glare so I think that's why he used one meter um, height for the glare observer so it's okay you can cheat on that one <laughs> okay and the vertical illuminance he just um, where is the vertical so he put a vertical illuminance in two meters I think this is not correct he, sh he should have used this one like a calculation surface like this one calculation grid instead of that one so let's just use this one I will show you how you will do it okay so I use the calculation grid instead of the surface and then um, yeah you can edit this one then you can uh, change this one as calculation grid and you can make this one as two meters or one meter if you like and then the calc the distance can be you can do it in uh, manual or distance but i prefer to have five meters by five meters spacing for the calculation points so it will be like that and if you want to cheat if you want to achieve a good uniformity then you can make it 10 by 10 if you like uh, the five by five is very strict so if you make it 10 by 10 it's easier for you, for you to get the lux level and the uniformity so that's how you do it and you will say this is horizontal and then you can play this one if you saw my um sports lighting the football lighting tutorial you can just check this that one and you can uh, uh, that in that video i i I mentioned on how you will edit these calculation points and if you want to see the effect uh, you can say click the values here immediately and then you can see the values here now I, I'm not sure if you can see it here it's very small okay this is 67 lux and this is 97 lux and uh, make sure you selected it in a uh, real time in horizontal because I choose the horizontal here so yeah and yeah you can make it one if you like so that's what and um so that's this is how we, he did and then i changed it okay so that's how you will do it you just placed your um clear points there and also your calculation points using this calculation grid not the surface but calculation grid okay um what else glare points so if you go to the um uh, okay so let's run it and i will show you the report about the glare points so i think he placed the glare points um I, this is i think 20 meters is spacing you can let's let's measure it so let's go and check the ruler and measure the points so he made it ooh 40 meters spacing for the glare uh, observer so it's okay maybe this is the location of the, the airplane on the uh, on the pilots on the airplane inside or on the people working in that area so it's okay the client can ask you to make the uh, observer glare points anywhere they can tell you to put it in 10 by 10 or 5 by 5 if they want but usually it's typical to the other side so you can just run uh, two rows uh, sorry two columns and then maybe three rows like this and that's enough because the rest are typical on the other side okay so let's go and check the observer and you can see that the glare points has 29 28 here the highest is this one okay the highest is i think 37 yes it's 37 and if you check that one if this is observer number 79 if you check that observer number 79 where is it and if you get the summary here you can see where is the angle of the glare area so it's from here so it means if this is let's go to this project tab and then go to your calculation points and pick the 79 and you can see that the 79 is here and it says it's a very glare here so it means these floodlights here are the one causing too much glare on that area so the solution if for example the client says no i don't want to see 37 
max of the glare and I only want 35 so what you can do is you tilt down your floodlights more towards downward and you can see here I think the degree of this one is only um, I'm not sure what is the degree of this one okay because I'm not the one who made this one okay anyways but if if it's not possible just tilt it down and see the effect or if not go and select a better floodlight for that application because for example in our range we have this what we call uh, go to the outdoor lighting we have what we call the area flood lighting and you can see that the floodlight is really cutting the lights from the vertical it's almost like okay let's see this is the area flood pro it's you can see the photometric so let's try this one and i'll show you the photometric of this one so yeah it's like spreading the lights towards to the far far part of the apron area and then this round one is pointing downwards makes uh, lux value more and it's really cutting off the light because some floodlights if you can see some floodlight is like the symmetrical one you can see that it's too glary and what you can do is only to tilt it down but if your fitting is like this you don't need to, to tilt it down it will just uh, facing downward and let the light spread vertically so just try that one and um, yeah that's how you do your apron lighting and if you want to know more about apron lighting i created i still am creating the course in Udemy and see if you can uh, uh, check that one and if you want to learn more I because I put a detailed information about how to do apron lighting on that course so check that one all right so that's how you do the apron lighting and see you on the next uh, video tutorial bye